Good afternoon, everyone. At the turn of the century, the Surgeon General issued a call to action urging all Americans to fight obesity. Building on a deep-rooted culture of fat hatred and thin worship, the public health campaign soon mushroomed into a giant war on fat in which not just medical and public health authorities, but every segment of society and all of us as individuals are engaged in constant fat talk, aimed at educating, badgering, and shaming heavy people into shedding pounds. You could say that America has become a veritable fat talk nation, a place in which fat-related conversation, imagery, videos, and so forth are in inescapable parts of our social and built landscapes. We hear a great deal about the health and economic costs of obesity to the country, yet possible human costs of the fight against fat are almost never mentioned. The project I'm about to describe came about through sheer serendipity. In 2010 and 2011, I was teaching a class on the body in American culture at UC Irvine, and I offered my students extra credit for writing a personal essay on diet, weight, and the BMI in everyday life. I was absolutely stunned by what they described, young lives mostly devastated by struggles over weight. This was not part, part of the story of childhood obesity in America. I felt compelled to take their essays, some 250 in all, seriously as a data source to see what they revealed. Using the essays, I first sought to understand how the war on fat plays out on the ground. In American culture, I found, fatness is not primarily about health. More fundamentally, it's about morality and political inclusion or citizenship. While thin, fit people are celebrated as good bio-citizens, fat people are, deserved, uh, are deemed undeserving of membership in the community of valued Americans. As bio-citizens, our duties are to diet, exercise, and maintain normal weight ourselves, and to use fat talk to persuade others to do the same. First, informative or pedagogical fat talk, and then, if that doesn't work, abusive fat talk designed to shame them into losing weight. Such pressures might be ethical if diet and exercise led to sustained weight loss, but mostly they do not. Despite enormous progress in understanding the biology of obesity, efforts to find safe, effective means to prevent and treat it have not yet yielded satisfactory results. In a larger context in which being thin is equated with being a good American, the combination of few means with strong pressures has produced troubling effects. Looking at those effects, I first delved into the issue of selfhood, showing how the weight classes of the BMI have been internalized in such a way that people of all sizes increasingly define themselves by their weight category. The ethnography showed how both obese and overweight youngsters, subject to abusive fat talk, developed a self-loathing, emotionally troubled, quote, fat personhood. Being heavy was so damaging because they told they had a disease, which meant their bodies were defective, and because they were considered bad Americans, hence legitimate targets of social rejection. Thin and even normal-sized kids developed spoiled identities, too. What these essays showed is the emergence of the first war on fat generation, a generation obsessed with their bodies and whose most fundamental sense of self comes from their size. Big or small, everyone was miserable about their bodies, and almost no one was able to lose weight and keep it off. Pressured to lose weight no matter what, many young people took weight loss practices to an extreme, in the process damaging their health. I documented a veritable epidemic of dangerous weight loss practices that resulted in bodily harm, ranging from short-term problems such as loss of consciousness to longer-term damage to the musculoskeletal system, for example. The vast majority developed disordered eating, while some went further, sliding down the slippery slope into eating disorders. And the fat talk biocitizenship approach to fighting fat did not even work. In not one case of a very fat person did the conjoling and bullying of good bio-citizens in their lives help them lose weight. Oops. Oops. I want my... Sorry. Okay. 
So what are the take home points? What does this work add to what we already know? First, we know that stigma is growing worse and that the pervasive weight bias and discrimination in our society are harming the social and economic prospects of heavy people. My work goes further to show that the, uh, our current approach harms not just fat people, but potentially people of every size. Second, we know that stigma and shaming are damaging. By locating these within a larger social theory, my work shows that these ways of treating people are culturally legitimate, simply what is expected of a good bio-citizen. Eradicating fat shaming will be harder than is now thought. Third, if these stories are typical, and much evidence suggests they are, then the fight against fat might be causing untold damage to children and teens. Even after losing weight, many will never outgrow the feeling of being damaged goods. Many will carry the scars of weight abuse into later life. Finally, in our evaluations of obesity interventions, the human costs of our efforts deserve a place alongside the economic costs of obesity itself. Since few of these have even been named, let alone measured and tallied up, there's much work to be done. And I hope social scientists can team up with medical scientists in taking the next step. In the meantime, we need a cultural revolution. Even as scientific research on obesity continues, we need a revolution in the culture aimed at uprooting fat talk, stopping fat abuse, and dethroning weight as a central measure of human value. Thank you.